What an exciting time in dentistry. As a dentist, I have a unique opportunity to look in a patient's mouth and identify signs and symptoms of some major medical concerns. We have a silent crisis going on in America. We have a, a whole list of symptoms and medical diseases that are directly correlated to the problem of an underdeveloped airway. Oftentimes this begins as an infant and it creates a lifetime of problems for a patient into adulthood. And oftentimes a patient goes through generations or decades of life without knowing that the root cause of this problem is really an underdeveloped airway or an underdeveloped jaw, maybe crooked teeth, maybe headaches. Um, and we have such a great opportunity as a dentist to really make a change for a patient and change the path and course of their health for the rest of their life. Some of the things we see in our children you know, maybe as benign or as simple as snoring, or a child who is restless and their sheets are in a ball when they wake up in the morning. Um, that may seem like a, like a funny or silly symptom, but that can be a sign of a very serious condition. Um, that can be a sign of underdeveloped airway, um, small jaws, the inability of that child to get deep sleep. As we carry on into adulthood, oftentimes many of these symptoms worsen. That can be headaches, that can be jaw pain, that can be broken teeth, um, that can be the appearance of crooked teeth, um, that can be hypertension, stroke, cancer, diabetes, being overweight. All of the root causes of these medical problems are an underdeveloped airway. The unique thing is here at the Breathing and Sleep Center, we have a unique opportunity to identify these problems help you figure out what these solutions can be and change you for the rest of your life. This video really summarizes, you know, why we're seeing so many problems in our modern society. Just a few hundred years ago, the human face was different. It was forward grown. Her wide profile and large dental arches ensured straight teeth and room for her tongue. Most importantly, she had plenty of space behind her upper jaw so she could breathe through her nose with ease. The modern face has changed. From childhood, her dental arches are less developed, crowding her teeth and giving her less space for her tongue, which impacts her airway. Many believe this stems from a number of causes, such as allergies that affect breathing. Another is the poor nutrition and softness of modern diets, causing toddlers to have underdeveloped chewing muscles and smaller dental arches. Because her upper jaw is too far back, she will struggle to breathe normally through her nose. To get more oxygen, she will compensate by opening her mouth to breathe, bringing her lower jaw down and back, creating a downswing of the face. This is how her undergrown upper jaw creates the appearance of buck teeth. She's actually compensating in order to breathe. If not corrected, the problem carries into adulthood. Extractions were documented in the 1600s as a way to treat crowding. Although they are a quick fix, they don't treat the problem of underdeveloped arches and have been implicated in harming the facial profile, making them the subject of much debate even today. In order to breathe, she will slouch her head forward to prop open her airway, creating a lifetime of neck and back pain. This is the infamous forward head posture. Having a healthy airway is crucial to the survival of life, and especially so during sleep. When muscles around the throat relax during sleep, a healthy airway stays open because the tongue is sitting forward and has enough space to be suctioned up against the fully grown palate. With underdeveloped jaws and dental arches, the palate is too small for the fully grown tongue, which is sitting back to begin with. When she sleeps, her tongue does not suction, rather it falls back and cuts off her airway. This is obstructive sleep apnea. Like crooked teeth, it's a modern condition. However, it can reduce life expectancy. 
Not surprisingly, obstructive sleep apnea is marked by the same traits that describe the headgear effect. Both jaws are grown down and back, creating a clockwise rotation in the lower third of the face. The myth of the overgrown upper jaw that needs to be held back has long since been replaced with science. Science has shown that young children can be buck-toothed naturally and that the lower jaw catches up over time with a fully developed upper jaw. Essential to this is nutrition, the use of chewing muscles early on in life, and good breathing habits. This means breathing through the nose with the mouth closed and the tongue resting up against the palate. Also, the practice of maxillary expansion has been shown for over a century to correct crooked teeth and improve nasal breathing space. And since 1918, orofacial exercises have been shown to correct mouth breathing habits. Anthropologists have really been focusing in on the changes of our human development and especially our skull over the past hundreds of years. And as we've seen in the previous video, how that development can be affected by so many things. The human skull 400 years ago had plenty of space for their teeth. They had the perfectly developed jaw that created enough space for their teeth so they didn't have crooked teeth. They had enough space for their wisdom teeth. They didn't need orthodontists or oral surgeons back then. If you fast forward to today's world where we introduce a lot of processed foods starting early on, we don't breastfeed as much as a lot of primitive populations and we, we're seeing that we're not developing those muscles and developing that bone will, which will then develop a proper and healthy airway. And we saw that these populations as they got exposed to our Western society that their development and their issues had a quick onset and it didn't take long for them to become Western society with those underdeveloped jaws, those underdeveloped muscles and those underdeveloped airways. Another important piece to this development is the function of our tongue. Our tongue will actually act as a scaffold for our developing jaw early on in life. We want that tongue up and forward in the roof of the mouth developing the shape of that jaw. But if that tongue is not up and forward, it's going to sit down and back and further block our airway. If we don't have a properly developed jaw, there's not going to be a place for our tongue to live. And since it can't actually live up and forward in the roof of our mouth, that's when it will fall back and further block that airway, causing a lot of oxygen issues and a lot of sleep issues, which then continue into a lot of comorbidities down the road. So this is something that we can see early on in life, even as early as a newborn, of the function and the ability of the tongue to naturally help develop our entire anatomy. The roof of the mouth is actually the floor of the nose. So if we get a properly developed jaw, we're also getting a properly developed nasal airway. And breathing through our nose is where we're gonna get the nitric oxide. We're gonna get the filtration and humidification of the oxygen and the air that we are breathing. And that can further improve our allergies and our asthma and many other conditions that are caused by more mouth breathing. One really interesting study uh, that just came out that is really pertinent to our today's world is nitric oxide will actually inhibit the replication cycle of the coronavirus. And the only way that we can produce nitric oxide naturally is by breathing through our nose. So breathing through our nose is a huge aspect of our immune system. What can we do about it? And that's what's the exciting part about our practice here is we can address all of those issues permanently. We can create permanent solutions. We know what to evaluate. We know what to look for. And we can actually have a treatment that will permanently address those issues, whether it be signaling stem cells and recreating growth of our skull and of our jaw bones, or evaluating the strength and the range of motion of the tongue and addressing that. 
The great thing about this practice is we are now actually looking at the root cause and treating the root cause and creating a permanent solution instead of just giving it a band-aid like a lot of Western medicine tends to do. One of the really serious things with children today is ADD. Um, there is a lot of really great literature coming out every month linking ADD to the lack of a child's ability to breathe while they're asleep. These studies have really made it clear that the symptoms that these children have, whether it's a child who has ADD or they cannot breathe and sleep at night, these symptoms are identical. Oftentimes children are misdiagnosed with ADD when truly it's a breathing and sleep problem. The ability to take a child who's struggling in school, who's suffering from a diagnosis of ADD and is on multiple medications to treat that, and the ability to take a child like that and, and allow them to breathe and sleep, and all of a sudden they can concentrate. They're healthier. They have more energy. They're more successful in school. They have more success with their peers. Um, what a wonderful opportunity for a child. Another common embarrassing situation for a child is bedwetting. Oftentimes bedwetting is related to the inability of a child to get deep sleep. We have some additional information on ADD and bedwetting. Please access those videos on our website. As you've heard from my partners, we are passionate about working with kids. But as we work with adults, those are very, very special to us because those are the ones that really start to recognize these symptoms in their everyday life. Whether it be problems sleeping, or they snore when they sleep and it's bugging their bed partner, or headaches, or weight loss that they can't achieve and they're trying everything to do it. This is when those patients start to come and they are really ready to start making a change in their life. For years for the adult patient, we only really had two non-surgical options. And those options were the CPAP mask that went onto your face that blew air down your throat or your nose to help keep the airway open. The second option was a dental device that held your jaw in a certain position. One of the most exciting things that I've seen in the last 26 years is a device that now uses the patient's own biology to grow a new airway. Not only does this device change the bones that support the teeth, but it also changes literally the airway that goes from the nose all the way down into the lungs. This new technology has been made possible by a wonderful researcher, a wonderful, wonderful man by the name of Dr. Singh. Dr. Singh has been working with the proteins that turn on and off your genes for the over 30 years. It's using that research that allows us to put the power of adults to still change back into their hands again. It is literally changing the path dependent on what your potential always was. And that's what makes it so exciting because it's basically never too late to change. It's never too late to get better again. One of the frustrating things about the treatments of obstructive sleep apnea in the past was the life sentence of wearing this CPAP mask every night or wearing a dental device every night. And honestly, as a patient wears those things, they typically continue to get worse. And the adaptive capacity of the patient starts to diminish because you just run out of the ability to turn the air up more or to bring the lower jaw even farther forward. With the new treatment that uses your biology, your genetic makeup, to permanently make a change, that's where the magic happens. You can breathe better during the day, you can breathe better at night, and you don't need to have anything more to maintain that airway. Your body does it on its own. One of the best ways we've ever been able to measure these results for our patients is the advent of digital technology. These are some before and after digital photos, digital x-rays that really can show you the potential of what these patients had in them all along. And they were able just to unleash it once they were given the environment to change. We have a very unique facility, a very well-trained staff, and we would love to meet you or anybody that you might be concerned about that we can answer these questions. We offer a free consultation and a free screening, and we're here for you.